Hi there, Anthony. Uh, so, tell us about meat. What's what's the real meaning of the word meat? Well, I don't know the exact standard definition, but I do understand that what we understand as meat is usually transcribed to food. Meat is normally um, associated with food, and as far as how I feel, meat is the meat of the fruit, the meat of the uh, apple, the peach, the pear. Those that's the meat. But I think somewhere along the line, we might have been uh, tricked, bamboozled into eating the flesh of an animal and calling that meat. And uh, from that point on, everyone I've met from that, including myself, I'm guilty of it too. I've eaten meat most of my life. And I remember being inflamed, constipated, sick all the time, you know, mucusy, um, just chronic uh, respiratory issues um, over my lifetime of, of just different problems, fevers, colds, flus, whatever. And so uh, that's what meat is to me. Just It's just a constipation when it comes to from an animal source. From a fruit source, it's cleaning and clearing and nutrition, nutritious. So, um, the word meat now applies to animal products, right? Yeah, yeah meat applies and, to And what do we call the meat that's in the fruit? Our flesh. We call the meat that's in the fruit like the flesh of the peach, the flesh of the pear, the flesh of the mango. So mm -hmm. we've trained the words, yeah. It's a little bit confusing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because we, we assume flesh and meat to be a nutritious, a nourishment source. But if you think of the word nourishing, it normally means something that you cannot live without. And I can tell you for the last 12 years, I've been living without eating the animal flesh and much happier and healthier. Mm -hmm. So um, how are animals um, how, how are animals being grown and, and um, killed and so on? What's your awareness about this? Not much different than and how so many people are being treated. I'm being kidnapped from their nature, their home, many people, and cows and pigs and ducks and all that stuff. And um, after they're kidnapped, they're mutilated, you know, they're branded with a number, you know, many of us have been branded with our social security number, not maybe on our flesh, but uh, we're definitely poked and prodded with vaccinations and other injections. Animals are also poked and prodded with many medications. Most of our antibiotics, from what I understand, are going to livestock. And also any kind of medication that's also going to uh, change the behavior of an animal. So many antidepressants, antipsychotics, you've got a thousand pound animal, uh, you know, one cow can be over a thousand pounds from what I've understood. And you've got hundreds upon hundreds of them, if not thousands of them, at a feedlot or a place where there are many animals all together, it would only make sense that if they wanted to, up, not uprise, but, you know, stampede or, or Free act themselves, out. right? Yeah, they would. But if you're dumbed down with the foods they've eaten, which are mostly grains and corn and you know, just stuff that's really toxic. Yeah, do cows normally eat grains? In the wild, I wouldn't think they would. I, that wouldn't make so what sense. So what do cows in the wild uh, eat? I mean, if you've seen any wild pasture, um, water buffaloes or something related to the cow, you've seen them eat grasses. So that's what they normally eat, grasses, from what I, I've seen. So why cows uh, today are fed grains? It inflames them, gets them really fat, and it controls them too, not just physically inflames them and gets them bigger because obviously you're getting paid more by the pound, you know, selling the flesh of an animal, but also the grains and so forth affect humans the same way. That's mm -hmm. what I've noticed. So, so also feeding them grains is cheaper, right? Oh yeah, yeah, eating. But then again, all the, all the, from what I've understood, all the animal agricultural business is subsidized. So our ideas of, of less expensive than expensive really don't apply because all that money is being stolen from the American taxpayer or other you know, uh, countries. Mm -hmm. countries. So how are, um, how are animals being killed? Oh, um, they're killed. I mean, anybody being killed is vicious and violent. Um, some of them are with a bolt in their head, some of them with electricity. Um, just, just... Is there any research that, they're, that, that animals are aware when they're being killed? Absolutely. I mean, I mean, if they're... I don't know if they put them in an airtight, sealed room. I don't know if that's the case, or, or a soundproof room. I doubt it. But just being in, the, in a room close to where you're hearing the screams and the yells and the smell, you're smelling the smell of all these horrible things coming out of, of someone dying. I mean, you're constantly bombarded by that. So not only the animals being attacked, but also the people that are doing the violence, you know, they're subjugated or they're in that room. And I'm sure when they go back to their families, a lot of that, you know, that projection is still in them, all that violence. Mm -hmm. So. Are kosher um, animals treated anywhere anyway better? Yeah, I guess they're prayed over so they kill them, and there's, you know, one of the things. So they that, receive the prayers, right? Before, oh, how nice! Something receives a prayer, but the whole idea of the prayer and the these blessings people have over their food, let's say, I've learned that you can pray anything away. You can you can pray your guilt, the violence that you do away. You can kill children. You could do a very horrible thing. Many of the people that are being caught 
doing very horrible things to children in, in American society as well as the whole world have been done with people of religious nature. So if you can, if you have a God that can, <laughs> that can forgive you for doing very bad things, then maybe your God is necessarily not the most benevolent uh, God there is. Yeah, actually I was very shocked to see that a kosher way of slaughtering animal is, mm -hmm. is completely like bleeding them alive. Oh, yeah. It's very, very cruel. So, um, what happens to human bodies when when human when human beings eat animals? What happens to? Well, I mean, it's observed that we become more violent. We become numb, and very much in the very simple physiological sense, I, f I feel that we become constipated immediately. I mean, we can't. I mean, if you cook the food, you're going to destroy the enzymes. The enzymes help break down the substances into something that your body may be able to use, or at least release from your body. So you have no fiber. You've got no enzymes. You've got um, also when you cook the food, you develop carcinogenic elements, and this is you know you can look up the World Health Organization's information, and you can Google or search some way and find out what happens to flesh protein when it's cooked or fats. You know fats and protein are in flesh, and you can even look at carbohydrates when you cook them. You know what happens to it? It's very carcinogenic. It's unnecessary. So when a person eats it, not only physically they're causing harm to themselves. But mentally, I've noticed that people are very numb. They oftentimes, someone who eats meat doesn't want to sit through a whole um, series, or not series, but a one movie of earthlings and see how their meat is produced. You know, when you're that afraid to see the truth, that, ch that tells you something. You know, where someone who is a plant-based person doesn't mind seeing the truth. It hurts them. It's going to bring out some emotions and you're going to cry, but you're willing to see the truth. A meat eater won't. They won't watch earthlings. Why? So they, so they want to deny the truth? Yeah, that's and not just deny the truth, but hide it from other people, hide it from their children, hide it from their loved ones, and constantly f have other people become addicted, feed hamburgers and cheeseburgers to other people's children. You know, people that may be a vegan, may be plant-based, may have interests and aspirations to go a little higher in the vibrations or the, the cleaner and the healthier body. So they'll try to poison everything around them. I mean, it goes to nature. And it happens unconsciously, right? No, it's conscious, absolutely conscious. I don't even think it's unconscious anymore. It's obvious. I mean, you can't hear. I'm in California right now, and they're suffering one of the greatest droughts. There's so much that the, that the city, the county, has restrictions on catchment, have restrictions on water for the individual, but they don't put any restrictions on, on the feedlots, on the slaughterhouses, and the where all the water is being polluted and destroyed. So it's conscious. People are just forcing other people not to see this, and it's being subsidized by the, by the government. It's paid for. Mm -hmm. so, How do children react when they see animals uh, treated that way? I've seen the children cry when if you see if you have a bring a pet puppy to or bring a puppy to your child I mean from newborn all the way to when they become distant and numb of course but as a child you know grab a hammer and hit the animal just imagine hitting the animal in its head and the, the, the fear and the pain causing to the animal normally a good normal the child will try to defend the animal you know, they don't want to see another animal hurt. Uh, they want to take care of it. Obviously, when the baby's like a newborn until six months or whatever, they they might squeeze a life out of a chick. You know, they don't know their own strength or what they're doing. You know, and this is something I don't know how to explain, but this isn't something that they, they grow up to wanting to rip apart an animal and put it in their mouth. You won't see a baby do that. If they do, then, then you have something different than a human baby. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that meat eating is not natural to human species? No, I don't see it being natural at all. I mean, do you... As an example, if, if you know, some people today, they ask me about protein deficiency, some, some, some man I met, and I thought to myself, like, in my head, I thought, you know, do you, do you, are you, can anyone trust you with your pet? I mean, are you at home sometimes eating your, your carrots and apples and then go, damn, I have this protein deficiency. I need to grab that cat, that, that cat or that dog and rip it apart and swallow it. It's not human behavior. Otherwise, if it was, you'd be jumping on cats and dogs and squirrels and cockroaches and all types of animals but that's yeah. not yeah that man asked you today um wow you 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 eat fruit and you run for miles mm -hmm. so where do you get your protein what did you say to him well, where do you get your heart disease where do you get your heart attacks your cancer i mean i, I told it him it doesn't come from eating fruit right it, that's what he thinks he thinks protein doesn't come from fruits protein Oftentimes we were taught in school that the proteins in the nucleus of a cell and the cell membrane is composed the cell membrane the cell wall is composed of the fat but um, but put those neutrals those those words aside and just ask yourself like you know how scared are we I, I let them know that protein that word is something that's being spread by the lobbyists by the marketing geniuses of the the beef and dairy association and others like that you know that's that's a reflex question where do you get your protein I mean 
you just found out a guy runs a lot more than you do. I'm sure that guy doesn't run anywhere near my distances or push-ups, exercises, or anything. And I perform, I would not perform in any way. I'm probably the same age as this guy. I'm 41 yeah. years old. And yet his first reaction is where do you get your protein? Instead of like curiosity, like, wow, that's really cool. How, you know, how can I learn to live with less suffering to other people? Do people don't even want to live with less suffering of themselves or others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, before we finish, I want to ask you, how can we come off, those of us who are watching this, how can we come off addiction to meat? Yeah, addiction as Because in, you said it's if it's not part of nature, it's part of culture, right? It's part of habituation. Yeah, I mean, I could tell you I was, an, I was a womanizer, I was an alcoholic, I was very addicted to fighting and physical things like that. Um, you know, I went to different counseling groups and what I noticed is that when I... Number one thing for me is to change my associations, change the people that I'm around. That's number one before I do anything or at least get that in my heart, wanting to change myself. If you're not willing to change, then stay where you're at, play in the pit, play in the mud. But if you want to change yourself, you got to start changing some people around you. Love them and maybe you'll come back to them. But at the moment, if you want to stop uh, drinking alcohol, stop going to the bars. If you want to stop smoking cigarettes, stop hanging out with people who smoke cigarettes. So with, with food, very similar to the, um, to the idea of the 12-step program, they typically re replace their addiction with, with a, a mental addiction, which is religion. You know, they use that as a crutch. But if you replace the meat with an excess amount of fruit, just keep on eating fruit and fruit and fruit, some vegetables, of course, you're going you're gonna to fill up that space of li with living enzymes, replacing all that dead, nasty stuff that needs to come out of your body. So as you're doing that, your body's going to naturally start pushing things out. And at first, there'll be some discomfort. Because when you put the fruit on top of the meats and the dairies and the, the starchy stuff that you've been eating, it's going to expand. It's going to cause some, some sharp pains here and there. But the fruits can help break all that stuff down. And that's what I recommend. That, flushing, and, and, and just go on that way. And you'll notice that after a period of time, you never want to drink alcohol again. I used to drink so much alcohol. Um, you never want to eat meat again. I used to eat a lot of meat and dairy. You have no interest in that because now you feel so vibrant, so energetic, so positive, and... Um, not well, clear, only, right? Clear. Mm -hmm. Your senses. You can feel heightened senses. Or senses. I hate even using the words heightened senses makes no sense. It's just normalized senses. Right now we're living in a state of deprived senses. That's why we smoke weed, we do cannabis, we do alcohol, we do any kind of substance and, and sure you know, some foods that are very fat fattening foods also numb our senses. Yeah. So the higher the vibration they call So what it. would you do if someone has a lifestyle where for business reasons they need to hang out with people in restaurants and you know, what how would you transition then? Um, first I would say be a leader and pull them out of the restaurant. And just tell them the restaurant's another word for a prison, a jail. Break out of that mold, break out of that box. Meet at a park, a public park. There's plenty of public parks. Meet at a at a library in some ways. There's some meeting rooms in libraries. Yeah. Um, there's other ways to do it. But if you have to go to a restaurant um, the, the reason why I said restaurant, or you would mention restaurant if you think about it, you're constantly surrounded by a toxic environment. If you want to create something beautiful and nourishing and actually pro profitable and productive and not draining, you want to be around things that are less toxic. And generally, restaurants are full of toxic chemicals for cleaning agents. I mean, do you really want to sit in a, a room where you're not even being att paying attention to the, to the numbingness of the air quality around you. That's crazy. Be around somewhere where you're vibrant with your energetic, you know, fresh sunlight, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what's your advice for someone who's traveling a lot? Traveling a lot? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, if, you, if you're talking about eating some yeah. food. Yeah, driving uh, around yeah. and, you know, has to be on the road all the time or, or travels on airlines the a lot. The fastest food is fruit. And if you're going to fly, because planes do uh, limit your fresh fruit, you can get the fruit cut. You can always buy fresh cut fruit or fruit salads and things like that. Um, or, I mean, the flights, the longest flight I've taken is 13 hours and so forth. You don't have to eat <laughs> for 13 hours. You're not going to die not eating. You're, you're going to die not breathing, but you can survive eating, not eating something. Drink water. Drink whatever you need. Clean your body out. Because if you're spending your time constipating yourself, you're spending your time getting sick. Period. It's just no other way mm -hmm. around it. So think of it that way. Do you, do you really want to poison yourself? Is it worth it? And at the same time, people say, you know, well, if you're working, you're on the road all the time, you need to eat, and you need to eat whatever's available, you know, junk foods and this and that, snack foods. Well, think of an animal. Do you think that, that a cow is going to say, damn, I, there's not enough grass here. i got to start eating other cows. i got to start eating animals. No, that's crazy because what happens is when the animal eats something that outside of its, its, uh, its ability to digest, it just constipates it, makes it sick, and it'll suffer. You know, nature will not allow that. It will, 
it should we'll eliminate it. It'll eliminate it, you know, natural selection, you know, or not natural selection, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how would you, um, and when when you eat fruit, you mm -hmm. don't worry about fruit being organic so much, right? No. So when fruit is non-organic, can it go, like, can the chemicals go out of your system quickly? I mean, you use it, just the definition, just simple, the simple definition of organic. Organic is living, living substance and so forth. The inorganic would be like salt or some mineral, just plain like that. Soil, you know, in some respects, without the bacteria. So it's a play on words, it's a marketing word. And then at the same time, you have no control over that. The standards are being set, not even by you, it's being set by the United States Department of Agriculture. It's also set by the standard, by the person practicing it, because while they're not being tested, they're going to do what they need to do to get the most profit for their, their buck. So I do um, condone, you know, if you can afford it, if it economically doesn't stretch you very far, go organic. But if it's twice the size, you know, twice the price for what you're going to pay for, for to give you nourishment for your family, for yourself, or transition to where you need to be, um, you need to reach for what you can. Obviously, there's some fruits that I would be very mindful, like berries. I, you know, if they're not organic, I wouldn't touch them. They, they absorb things much quickly, uh, much more, what I've understood. Um, apples, understand that apples, because they're such a wonderful shelf life fruit by itself, without tampering with it, you know, it can just sit there for a year, maybe a year, I think. Um, a lot of fruits are frozen and refrigerated before they're sent to the public. So be mindful of how foods are, are handled. I mean, organic food can still be sprayed with, with fecal matter com, uh, contaminated water. It doesn't stop. And the, it is oftentimes when you go to a Whole Foods or a store like that, they're spraying water on these fruits and vegetables constantly. And it could be fecal contaminated. But oftentimes this water has bleach in it. You know, it has some um, chlorine bleach. It has other methods in there to you know, disinfect, to clean, whatever, to keep the animals away from it. I mean, do you, the next time you go to Whole Foods, look around for flies and fruit flies. You don't see them. Why? Because you're poisoning the fruits and vegetables. So if you're poisoning them, the animals aren't there. No ants, no no animals are there. That should scare you, really, before you eat the fruit. No maggots are coming out of your fruits and vegetables. People are fearful of maggots, but they're not fearful of the toxic poisons that are killing the maggots. You know, so you have to change the way you're thinking about things. So as far as chemicals and not chemicals, we're in a chemical bath. Inhaling this air is pure, pure chemicals, I'm sure, with the stuff here in California. But what I'm saying is use what's available. And the benefit of fruit is that it's in and out of your body much quicker than anything. Faster, I mean, besides water. Faster than uh, meat, dairy, eggs, fish, all that garbage and, uh, and cooked foods. Much faster elimination. When I eat potatoes or squash, I inflame. My face inflames. It gives me comfort, but the only reason it gives me some, some temporary comfort it's because my body is drugged. <laughs> Why do I want to be drugged out, you know? When I eat fruit, it affects me differently. I'm high vibration, I'm very sensitive, I'm emotional. And and, and when it when it passes, I'm just more aware and more awakened. That's all, more alert. Hmm. Super, thanks so much, Anthony. You're welcome. And we'll be in touch with you, definitely. Thank you for recommending books to us and movies and educating and inspiring. Stay in touch. Thank you. Hopefully we're going to do a retreat one time with you. That'd be nice. That'd be wonderful.